Now, part of the risk mitigation, remember mitigation, lowering of the risk, involves identifying controls that can reduce the potential loss. Okay, so that means we need to find some controls, and I've given you some examples. Uh, with the building, one of the controls was the sprinkler system, right? That was a way we could lower the risk, uh, and that means I could reduce the potential loss. Likewise, if we're talking about uh, information in a database, um, one of the controls we could use, and a lot of you now are thinking security and hacking and all that sort of stuff, uh, how about just another database that's synchronized in a, a cluster situation where if one goes down, the other one's still available and has all the information. Or maybe not as fancy as that, but a hard drive on a RAID array uh, where we know that if one hard drive fails, the other hard drives will take over until we get a replacement. I mean, there's lots of things, and that's our job, is, is, is to figure out ways to lower the, the risk uh, by identifying controls that can do that for us. Now, often a control should be analyzed through a cost-benefit analysis, meaning what's the cost of that control? I just threw out a couple of examples of another server with another database running on it. Uh, the, that, to me, sounds expensive. We've got the license of the server. Uh, license of the database server running on the server, the cost of the hardware, uh, the cost of the people to put it in, to train them to get it, to maintain it. And then I had another one that was uh, a RAID array. That was just uh, you know, a little rack. They, they are, some of them are expensive. That has a lot of hard drives in it. And, and we can start comparing costs. And, and we can say, how will this one control minimize the risk? How will this other one minimize the risk? And, and will, it, will either of them minimize the risk to a level that the organization is willing to, uh, to accept? And so right away, I'm throwing out a bunch of these, uh, of these ideas. And so what we're saying is we're going to do a cost-benefit analysis. You know, we're going to say, do both controls I just mentioned minimize the risk to an acceptable level? If they do, then maybe we might consider the least expensive of those as a, as a, a solution. And expense is more than just the cost of hardware, remember. It's all of the costs of the control. That's the uh, training of the people to run it, uh, you know, the knowledge they need, it, you know, all of that is a part of it. Okay, um, now, when we say we want to lower, lower that, uh, that risk, we want to minimize it to something that's acceptable. All right, so what is preferred risk? All right, I mean, we're going to find a method to reduce it, um, but, you know, the, the thing is, at what level? Uh, what, what rating would we give you as preferred risk? Well, there's some examples. We could say, well, you know, to us, the preferred risk is terminating all of the risk. Now, okay, that's literally impossible, but we can certainly reduce it to a very low number. Uh, minimizing the probability of the risk or minimizing the impact of the risk are ways that we can look at reducing the risk. And, and, and that's good. Minimizing the probability of the risk um, or, or minimizing the impact. I think my sprinkler system in the building is a better example of uh, minimizing the impact. Now, to minimize the probability of the risk is, you know, if it's about the building and fire, is maybe I, I, I would consider furniture that's non-combustible, made out of metal, you know, the uncomfortable stuff. Kind of like this building I went to in Pittsburgh where I was uh, doing some work. It's, uh, I can tell you this, it's the Alcoa building, made out of aluminum. Everything, including um, the facilities inside. Uh, not very comfortable, uh, but it was unique. I'm not thinking that the building itself has big a risk factor to fire, right? Minimize the probability of the risk, um, and maybe even the, minimize the impact just by how it was built, as compared to my house. But anyway, again, examples, I'm trying to paint the word pictures that help you understand this uh, idea of the risk. So let's kind of recap this whole discussion about risk analysis. We started off by identifying the business objects. And remember, it's kind of a whole life cycle here. Now, in that process of, uh, of the business objectives, as I said, we wanted to know what keeps this company alive. Why is it here? What's its purpose, its goal? And, uh, and it's important that we understand, as we always should, that it's up to us to support this business uh, operation. If it doesn't run, it doesn't do what it's supposed to, there is no business. Now, from there, we uh, decided, okay, when it came to information technology, what information assets are supporting the business objectives? I mean, what are the most crucial? What can they not live without? 
and uh, would just take the company completely down if they lost it or there was a loss or an outage. And from that, what we did is we said, okay, we now know what is the first, and, and by the way, you can very easily have disagreements throughout your entire team that's planning and putting this together. Some might say, well, this database uh, of knowledge is the most important. And others might say, well, you know, if we didn't have this database over here, we could never get this one over here. And, I, and I'm speaking, I know, in vague, vague terms. But I'm sure you get the picture of the uh, conversations, which is, which is good. It's a good conversation to have that you're going through and identifying these assets. So don't, don't get me wrong. Eventually, you'll have a decision maker who will say, all right, this is the most critical. This other one is also very critical. And, and we'll make them both a part of this, of this process. Nobody said you had to have just one. All we're saying is identifying what those assets are. And, uh, and if there's more than one, more than one, great. That just means you want to do a risk assessment on those um, assets that you've identified as being crucial. So you perform the uh, risk assessment then. And, uh, and uh, of course, what's the goal, right? The goal of the risk assessment is to eventually know what we can do to reduce or mitigate that risk. That means we're going to uh, perform a risk mitigation. We're going to be basically mapping risks to the controls that we can use to lower that threat uh, of the risk. And uh, from there, it'll be uh, the next thing we'll do is uh, perform a risk treatment. And at that point, we will then uh, basically implement it. If we've approved it, we'll implement it. And we're going to, um, at some point, have to periodically redo the evaluation of risk. Because things change, new attacks, new techniques, new uh, weaknesses, new equipment, new uh, programs, uh, you know, I mean, all aspects of technology is constantly on the move. And as we upgrade, update, um, you, you know, we're going to want to go through this process again and again and again. So that's why I said it's a risk life cycle. But that's a part of risk analysis. And of course, for the purposes of our, of our audit, uh, this is a, a way of identifying uh, what we're going to make plans to actually do an audit of, which controls, which, you know, right? So you get the idea that, you know, as, as why risk analysis is an important part of this process, an ongoing part of this process of the entire audit um, uh, that we're going to be talking about as we continue to dive in here and talk about all of the different aspects of what it takes to do an audit and assurance analysis.